good friend is that one who overlooks your broken fence and admires the beauty in your garden. The question is, what kind of a friend are you? I will leave you with that to ponder on. Hello, it's a pleasure to have you join us on the program People and Events. I am Elizabeth Omori. This week's edition of the program is packed and not to forget a musical drama that will help you redefine who you are. That report is online. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The creme de la creme of the Nigerian society converged on the Adegunwa Villa in Odobolu local government area of Ogun State to rejoice with Alhaja Fatima Adegunwa, who turned 70 recently. The celebrant is the wife of the chief executive officer, Right Foods Company in Nigeria, Chief Suleiman Adebola Adegunwa, OFR. Jua Popola reports that Juju music maestro King Sunny Ade was on hand to add color to the event. People from all walks of life converge on Ososa to celebrate the matriarch of the Adegunwa family as he clocked 70. It was a day filled with encomiums. To celebrate 70 years, celebrate another 30 more years by the grace of God. Wish her happy birthday to pray the Almighty God who will grant all the desires of her heart. Very kind. I pray for her that she will live long. She's a wonderful woman to the core. She's very nice to anybody. In fact, it's inborn in her. A jewel of inestimable value. A perfectionist. An excellent giver. The birthday celebration had in attendance former governors, royal fathers, senators, and other dignitaries, among whom is general manager Ntia Belkuta, Mrs. Fumi Wakama. Longer life, a good health. Great woman of virtue who has been a main pillar of support for her husband. An Islamic leader and chief imam of Bagura in Abekuta, Professor Kamal Din Balogun, congratulated the celebrant and called on Muslims to rededicate themselves to serve God and humanity. The celebrant later caught a birthday cake surrounded by her husband, children, grandchildren and well-wishers. I'm very grateful to be serving. Allah taught us to be wonderful and be humble to people, do good to the people. So I've been doing it while I was young. I love children, I love all the needy people. That's my own aim to Almighty Allah. Very obedient. I saw all these virtues in her, and then I rely on her. Philanthropist, um, somebody who just gives without no fear of poverty, she just keeps giving. I pray for good health, long life, and more prosperity. <laughs> We wish the celebrant many more years filled with happiness. It is a great saying that what the teacher is is more important than what he teaches. This translates into reality when a student remembered his university lecturer after 30 years by instituting an award to encourage the younger generation to strive for excellence. Aminu Omar captured the moment in Bayero University for people and events. It is the prayer of every teacher to see his students doing great after leaving school who also get inspired by their good teachers. This is what happened when Yusha Shaib, an alumnus of Bayer University Kano, who graduated from the Department of Mass Communication 30 years ago, decided to institute a prize for the best graduating student of public relations to be named after his lecturer, Professor Muhammad Bashir Ali and another one to be given to the best graduating student on digital economy, named after the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Alipantami. Even when you look at um, some of the tools that are used for digitalization, like social media, for instance, they are more like media, isn't it? So we look at it for anybody that can have initiate, innovate, or conduct research on that sector, and it can come from any, any department. And the reason, like I said earlier, is just to motivate the student to develop interest in this social field so that they can be employer of labor and they can have self-employment. 
Receiving the prize for the two awards, which covers 10 years, the Vice Chancellor, Bayra University Kano Professor Segir Adam Abbas said, Education is a sector that is capital intensive, which needs huge investment. There are many ways uh, in which uh, you can come in and make a difference. Uh, mass communication is one of the uh, departments in the university we are proud of because they are very active. And uh, secondly, it's one of the most equipped departments in the university. In the same vein, Mass Communications Class of 92 provided furniture and facilities at the staff common room of the department as part of activities marking its 40th anniversary. So on behalf of the uh, entire staff of Mass Communication Department by University of Kano, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the entire members of 92 class. Uh, this is uh, really great for their foresight to you know, have the thinking of uh, donated items, computers, printers, and even erecting a common room that we do not have. Yeah. So for you to see your sons and daughters okay. reaching that milestone is a pleasing thing. Uh, we wish you all the best in your lives. Uh, we hope that this mentoring you are doing for the junior ones will continue in Shah yeah. The 40th anniversary of the department, which ought to be held in 2021, but marked this year, coincides with 30 years of graduation for Mass Communications Class of 1992. It is a good thing to be impactful, make a difference today in your little space. Although long gone, the name Domkat Bali throws up memories of the Nigerian military. A soldier's soldier, a general, a book to recall and capture the very essence of the man was unveiled in Abuja. Momso Damien Dati was there and returned with more than a beagle and a salute. <laughs> The venue took in guests from all over Nigeria. <laughs> then former Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Solomon Dalong steals the show with his typical Tarok look. The Tarok people belong to the Bantu race. And, um, Historical narration has it that we are either from Central or South Africa. And there are some cultural similarities that is shared commonly among the Bantu race. We are a very hospitable but an unassuming community. And um, we are mostly a farming and a hunting society. It was a reunion for acquaintances, tribesmen, serving and retired military chiefs, ministers, members of the National Assembly, and other eminent Nigerians. The father of the day, President Muhammad Buhari, was represented by the Minister of Women Affairs. He asked me to come and congratulate General Bali's family to celebrate his wife who has stood firm with the entire family to redeem his integrity and by putting the records straight. President Buhari clearly told me that he has a lot of respect to this highly respected military gentleman who was his senior colleague. Former heads of state, General Yakubu Gowon, General Ibrahim Babangido represented, as well as some former military governors expressed satisfaction the true accounts were being made and the records were being set straight. Very courageous. Generally, if you cannot find a nicer uh, young man, young officer, as uh, a civilian. <laughs> if I'm paying tribute you know, to General Bali, I'm paying tribute to you know, all of you who did so well. Uh, to help ensure that the country remain one 
and to be really progressive. May God uh, continue to bless his children and his close friends. May God bless him. This book uh, being presented by Mrs. Duncan Valley, important book that gives uh, a true version of uh, what transpired during the imbroglio of uh, Duncan Valley's uh, designation as the Ponzi Tarok of, uh, of Lantan. The account of this uh, event needed to be told because of the controversies that trailed that uh, designation. But it is important to know that uh, Jada Valley, the gentleman that he was, took everything in his stride uh, with dignity, not allowing the confusion to drag his name in the mud. Well, this is the book. And then the climax of the evening, the unveiling of the book, General Domkert Yabali. This book, just 60 pages, six chapters, with 13 anesthetists. So why would the cream de la cream of Nigeria launch this book? Because it's a small book about big principles, and it's it is a human story about the need for society to have men of honor and integrity. 27 February would have been the 82nd birthday of a man described as an embodiment of unity. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Like everybody, his work too was very good. So a combination of two of them were able to win a lot of people. He's, um, it's full of humility, his love for people. Always saying the truth. The unifying force of the Tarok nation is a symbol of Tarok unity, Tarok morals, Tarok values, and every good thing about Tarok. The 60-page book is authored by wife of the late army chief, Esther Bali, and Dr. Matamusa. Thank you, Mom, sir. That is a must read piece. And the social matters made Duguri that Borno State Capital played host to high profile dignitaries from within and outside the country who converged to witness the wedding ceremony of the daughter of the Minister of State for Agriculture, Mustafa Baba Shihuri. Musa Ali reports that President Muhammad Buhari was represented at the wedding ceremony by the ministers of aviation and that of PA. Families, friends, politicians and distinguished personalities from all walks of life and across the country converged on Meduguri, the Borno state capital, to witness the wedding ceremony of Zara, daughter of Minister of State for Agriculture and Rural Development, Mustafa Babashepuri. Wedding Fatia, which took place at the minister's Meduguri residence, had a display of the rich Kanuri culture. Orders in attendance at the wedding Fatia include serving and former ministers, including Ibrahim Ali, former minister of state for petroleum, former minister of communication, Adeba Yoshitu, members of the National Assembly, business tycoons, captains of industry, among others. Professor Baba Ganazulum led former Borno state governors, including Maina Maji Lawan, Alima Dusharif, Kajin Shatima, to the wedding Fatiha. Abba Baba Shehuri, who stood in for the bride's family, consented to the marriage between Zara and Ibrahim Gonikau Abba. The marriage was contracted according to Islamic rights. Well, I'm expecting her to have a family with her, and I believe, inshallah, Allah will do it for me. And I'm really happy. Uh, at this moment, I can only thank God and the friends that stood with me all over the world. And I'm really excited and happy about it.
and trustworthy and nice to me. That's all. I want to spend the rest of my life with him, inshallah. the marriage sealed, guests were treated to a grand reception hosted by Borno State Governor. The umbrella is here today. It's a strong indication of the depth of love and respect you have for the Shaguri power. We in Borno State we are so much happy to see you in our midst, to rejoice with him over the marriage ceremony of his daughter. May Allah in his infinite wisdom give you the reward for attending this very important ceremony. Thank you everyone at the state. At the time, this is the only state where TEO and the United Nations are offices of the work of the local government of the state. Mustafa Baba Shehuri was full of gratitude to everyone who came from far and near to rejoice with him. He specifically thanked President Muhammadu Buhari and members of the Federal Executive Council, the Borno State Government, as well as management and staff of the Ministry of Agriculture. <laughs> of rich culture of the Kanuris brightened the ceremony to have a blissful marriage remain in love life is worth celebrating when one goes through the hurdles of life and still come out strong is the story of Uche Aneke the general manager of public affairs Nigeria electricity management service agency captured in a book my life my testimony. Joseph Olson, who was at the launch of the book, reports that the event coincided with the 20th anniversary and 50th birthday celebration of the author's wife. <laughs> There is so much to celebrate for the family of Uche and Nike, and this gallant entry tells it all. They have been joined by top personalities from different works of life for the launching of his book, My Life, My Testimony. The 91 pages and five chapters book, earlier reviewed by a renowned broadcaster, Amechi Anakwe, speaks volumes of Uche's journey through blissful career, struggle with illness, including survival of cancer, and three vehicle accidents as well as building a family amidst all, a breakthrough which the author attributes to God's grace. At this point, we are booking the documents key moments of the author's life, not just key moments of his life, where divine intervention proved critical in his life journey. Once you make progress and you make progress and people tell you, keep doing what you are doing. And when you are told, keep, what, keep doing what you are doing, it means you are doing very well. Yes tried very much to carry his family along, including his, his other siblings. And uh, as the first son of the family, I know that he has done so well and so good for his family. He has also been a committed family man, and uh, those are lessons that we, we can learn. You know. 
It is also a day to celebrate the family, which has remained resilient all through their life struggle, as this event coincides with the 20th wedding anniversary and 50th birthday of his wife, Neka. When he was diagnosed of cancer, the doctors uh, advices and what they told me what we are going to do was enough to cause miscarriage. I was six and months pregnant. But then I resorted to prayers and God gave me, it was like he shielded me with a, 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 a sort of grace. Even when they were giving me that chemotherapy, they said I may not be able to uh, impregnate my woman. I said, go ahead. After the chemotherapy, I, I, I had three more children. One wonderful thing about him is that he's very open and transparent. I need to advise his kids to emulate their, their father for his humility. For Uche and his wife, Neka, all they can say is thank you, Lord. Believing their testimonies will bless others to always. Congratulations and more grace. Our next report is one that will get you dancing because it's all about you and your history. Do take a listen and enjoy the musical play, The Strings from the Stables of the National Troop of Nigeria. Strings is a metaphor for the different threats of social, cultural, political, historical, religious, and ideological inclinations and values that bind our diverse heritage together. The folk musical drama draws its strength from the rich, and seamless admixture of storytelling, folk songs, dance, music, and performance in our African festive and theatrical traditions. It is a docudrama that recounts the social political travails of Nigeria from the year of Almagamation in 1914 through the pre independence waves of nationalism, the immediate post independence years of political crisis, the civil war, the military era, and the democratic phase of the present day. Lugat's baby is actually linked to blood to all the clans, generations, and relationships, and everything. And this reminds me of the fact that we, we have a shared humanity. The strings that bind us together is there. We are all really one. The ultimate message in strings is the need for us as Nigerians to reflect on our shared humanity and intercultural affinities. It is Being together is fun and the feeling is priceless. We will see you next week. Remember, always stay positive, be happy, love more and stay safe. See you again.